Today I have a mod to show you. I put it on the truck a few months ago. I kind of forgot to even show you. So I put an air compressor on the truck underneath the hood here. Didn't show you guys, it's the ARB single air compressor. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the hood real quick and show you what I'm working with. So here's the ARB single air compressor. I have it mounted to a Rango Fab mount. Now this mount worked really good. I did have to trim it up a little bit because I have the TRD Sport. A lot of setups you see are for the TRD off-road, which is fine, you can make them work, but there's a big difference between a TRD Sport and a TRD off-road when you come underneath the hood here. One of the big things is that brake system. So if you look on the other side where the TRD off-road would have a lot of empty space, I have a brake booster on that side so I can't fit an extra battery over there or my air compressor. So I had this option and it worked pretty good. Like I said, just had to do a little bit of trimming to make it look a little bit better, but I was able to fit the single air compressor here. Not the twin, I think I don't have enough room for that. So I opted for the single. Another reason why I opted for the single was price. And I really don't think I needed a twin setup. This has been more than enough for what I've been using it for. I'm gonna hop in and show you guys exactly how I use this and how fast I can bring up my tire, just one because I'm lazy, from 10 pounds, to show you guys that the single's pretty fast still. One eternity later. So we got just about 10 pounds. Now this is lower than I would normally put it when we're out on the trails. Usually I don't go any lower than 15. But for example, I put it up just about 10. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the uh, hose here and show you guys how this works and how fast it is. Ignore the clutter, guys. I don't know what you wanna call this, my like porch area, <laughs> but uh, because we live out of this truck and it's ready to live out of, there's uh, a bunch of stuff you would see in a house, some dumbbells, some water, some pop. Just ignore it. I'm gonna show you guys where I keep my air supply stuff. So back in here in the deck system, this is a mess, but this is kind of like my catch-all area. And then on that side, it's the kitchen. But here's my air hose that just kind of stays back there. I don't have anything special. This is just the hose that came with the kit. Works pretty good. I have had a reason to change it out yet. Maybe, maybe I'll change it out in the future, but it works pretty good for anything I need it for. So I'm just gonna use it. And then all you gotta do is plug it in to the air outlet. I think that's what this is called. They should just pull this back, go like that and put it on. The air compressor is not on yet. I'll show you guys how I turn it on, but that's all you have to do, hook it up. Some guys have this set up pretty awesome. I've seen where they have this little block system set up right on the outside of the wheels or like right up here so you don't have to pop the hood. I was a bit too lazy and honestly, I don't use it that much. I have a really bad habit of not using it. So we'll be out on the trail and I'll be like, man, this, this is a rough ride. I kind of forget I have this and I can just air down whenever I want. So I got to practice airing down because I have this now. <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys how to turn this on. Coming here on the inside of the truck, you can see that I have my switch panel here. Most of this is custom. This isn't like you can buy the switch panel. I just kind of like drilled holes out for this stuff. But it wasn't that hard to do if you guys need to know how to do that. You got all this extra space on the stock switch panel here. So I'm just using it up. But here's the air compressor switch. Go like that and it turns on the air compressor. Then as you guys heard it shut off. It shuts off when it reaches about 80 pounds or 100 pounds of pressure. I don't remember in the little tank there on the side. That way it doesn't over compress and it's not running all the time, which is nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and start airing this up from about 10 pounds now. I'm gonna put a little time lapse up, showing you guys how long this takes. I know you guys don't wanna watch this tire inflate the whole way, but uh, I'll show you guys how fast I can bring this tire up. It's about at 30 pounds now, 32 pounds. Once the tire gets warmed up, it'll be sitting around 35, 33, and that's about where I run my tires, around that 33 mark on a normal day. There you go. As you can see there, it took about two and a half minutes to fill this up from 10 pounds to roughly 32 pounds of air. I think that's pretty good for the single air compressor. I don't think that two and a half minutes is worth the extra. I think it's like $200 or something like that. It might be for you guys, and in the future, I might end up kicking myself in the butt if I go to put a front locker in this or a rear locker and I want to use the air compressor to do that and I end up needing to switch out the air compressor. But logically, I thought about it and an air locker is just an on off. So I don't think it's going to be running that compressor all the time to have the air locker on or off. I don't know. That's a whole different subject. But very happy with this. Saves room. I was thinking about getting a cheaper one that's like in a box or outside of the vehicle that's not hard mounted on here. But I'm out of room in the truck as you guys can tell. So this is a really good option for me. I'm very happy with it. I just need to start using it more. 
There's another way I use this all the time on my adventures, way more than airing up my tires, and I think you guys are gonna like this one. The other big reason why I wanted an air compressor on my setup is actually has nothing to do with the tires, it's up on my roof. So up here I have the Weekender Overland, that's not the right term, it's the Weekender Water Port, I think the actual name of it is. It's eight gallons of water that sits up here. Now there's a few ways that you can put water in this. One of the ways that we do it when we're out on the trail is this top part right here. It holds eight gallons, like I said, and I have that blue jug back there that holds about six. So what we do is we fill up that blue jug, I get up here and I put it in here. It takes about two trips because it holds eight gallons, but that water's not pressurized. The other way that you can fill this up is you hook it up to a hose with the little thing they got you, and it'll automatically pressurize up to eight gallons. Luckily for us though, when we're out on the trail, they give you an option to pressurize this water with an air compressor. So I can open this thing up right here, take off the little Schrader valve cover, and I can hook up the air compressor right to this. It's already at 40 pounds of water, but I just wanted to show you guys how that worked. It's pretty cool, and it makes sure anytime we're out on the trail that we can have pressurized water for our showers, for washing dishes, super convenient. And it, I use it way more than filling up my tires because I keep forgetting to air down. I wanted to mention to you guys to how the install process was for this. When I originally got this air compressor, I was looking at the book they gave me and all the wires and I was uh, a bit concerned. I didn't know how much wiring was gonna go into a setup like this. But a lot of the wires that came with this setup are actually not used at all and they're for front and rear lockers. So basically you can ignore a lot of the wires, but there are some wires that are pretty important. For example, if you get the whole kit like I did here, it comes with a pressure switch that needs to be wired up. This will allow it to shut off when it reaches a certain poundage or make sure it doesn't explode and get too much pressure build up in it. That's important. And then basically all you're doing is connecting a positive and a negative to the battery to a switch. Now, if you watched my video a couple months ago when I put this in, I actually almost broke my truck while I thought I did. It was pretty goofy. You can check that video out right here. It was pretty goofy on my part. I was going too fast with the install but it was related to the switch and how I wired it up to have the illumination on that switch. Pretty straightforward, I just use a tap on the small fuse block on the inside of the truck there. I can show you a little clip of that right here. Pretty straightforward how to do that. Just take your time, use the correct little fuse tap, not what I originally did in that video, bad idea. The install pretty straightforward. They make it seem way more complicated than it needs to be. Let me know in the comments what you think about onboard air. If you think it's overkill, you think it's unnecessary. I love hearing from you guys. I like to hear what you think. I personally love the onboard air. It helps a lot when we're out on the trail, just being able to air up anything I have. Also, we always have mountain bikes on the side of the truck. Being able to air those mountain bike tires up without my hand pump, super convenient. I am lazy, so it's nice to be able to do that. Having onboard air also gives me a really good sense of confidence when I'm out on the trail. I do have tire plugs if I get a hole, but if I lose air out on the trail, I would be pretty screwed. So just having this gives me some peace of mind. I don't know, I'm weird. Thanks for watching guys. Do me a big favor, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, it means a ton to me. Let me know if I should uh, look for different attachments for this. I noticed when I in my video there showing you how to uh, fill it up the uh, tire, this thing right here was not clamping on the tire right, so I had to hold it the whole time. Usually, when we were out on the beach, I was able to clamp this on the tire and walk away from it and check it in about two minutes, and it was fine. This time, it was kind of at an angle and like let some air out, so I might need to look at a different option. What do you guys think? I don't know. I haven't looked into it. Let me know what you guys are running. Thanks for watching. As always, I got on a little tangent there. Check this video out right here. It's pretty good, and I will see you in the next one.